Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to check out this logic analyzer sent to us by Miniware. It's the LA104 uh, and it is a portable logic analyzer. Just to give you an idea here before we get started on the video, uh, this is what this thing looks like. So it's uh, not too much larger than uh, your wallet or a credit card. Uh, and it's, so it's definitely pocket size good for logic analyzing on the go. Oh. Full disclosure, I reached out to them. They didn't reach out to me. Uh, I was looking for a small logic analyzer, and this is the smallest one that I could come up with that was not one of the USB ones. I wanted something with a display on it so I could actually see uh, in real time without ho hooking up to a computer, and I uh, wanted it to be small. Those were kind of the two things I was looking for, and I just searched around the internet and found this thing, and I emailed them and was like, hey, uh, let me check out what you got there. And so they sent one. So uh, that's kind of how we got here. Let's actually take a good look at this thing and see it in action and see some of the features. All right, so let's get the unboxing of it out of the way. Comes in a very similar box to a cell phone. You get a manual that does have English on there. So English is on this side and it actually is a decent manual. It does give you uh, some overview of everything that it does and how the menus work and the sub menus of it. So it is a useful manual and it is in English. You have the logic analyzer itself and then underneath it you have a box with the wiring and a power cable. The, uh, it does not include a charging brick, but it is just a common USB charger, so you can charge it with your computer or anything else. And then you have a warranty card uh, to fill out for your warranty information. Mini grabbers that are included, they are actually the decent ones that have the hard plastic here and are like that. All right, so they are that style of mini grabber, uh, which this is the style I like. Sometimes with those uh, kind of Chinese electronics, you'll get you'll get these mini grabbers that come with them. And this style is absolutely awful. They, they will fall apart, but that's not what's included in this set. I was happy to see uh, these ones. So uh, definitely give, gives it a thumbs up on the grabbers that are included. Uh, it is just kind of a typical ribbon cable there. They give you two of them. So you have a spare and then your pinout is here. You have channel one through four and then the ground is in the center and then you have the programmable one through four and three volts positive there. Uh, the pins on this thing are rated to five volts. So uh, you can have the three, three volt or five volt signal going to it. Uh, either one is fine. So you may be asking yourself, why does this logic analyzer uh, have four programmable pins and then four channels. So yeah, you only have four channels you can read from, but you can also write back out. So if you wanted to program a little script where it's going to send some data, so that way maybe you're trying to read an EEPROM and you want to send some data to the EEPROM and then receive it back and read it, uh, you can do that with this. Okay, so let's compare it real quick to my old logic analyzer, which uh, I am currently in the process of selling. So uh, definitely there's your little size comparison there. Now this does give me 16 channels while this only gives me four, but I never actually look at parallel data, which is the only thing I would ever use the 16 channels for. I can I can't really think of too many protocols with more than four channels that I would want to look at other than like parallel data, which I, I really don't do very many projects with. I've never had a need to look at. The main reason why I didn't use this thing is it's so inconvenient to use because I'd have to get out this giant mess of cables here and get the right connectors on the ends of the cables and get the little grabbers out. And I mean, it was... It was just never fun uh, to use this this logic analyzer uh, and the decoding is just not built into it the, the way I would want. So I, I might find myself using this more often than I did use this. Um, okay, so let's get a look at this in real world use. Uh, I have it set to user. I haven't really done a user 
definition yet for USB, uh, but that, uh, that is what I'm actually hooked up to here is USB. Let me rotate this over so you can see it. So I have this module that I've been working on. That's an isolated serial module. Uh, something's not working correctly on here. Uh, we don't have any USB communication. So we're going to try to diagnose that and take a look and immediately can see that it's not right. Uh, but let's go ahead and get another sample of this. That way you can see it in action. So unplug my USB device. All right, hit sample and plug it in. And there we go. We have a trigger and we can see that this one comes up the same. And uh, that time it didn't capture anything there. Uh, I would expect channel one and channel two to be the same, uh, mostly because I do actually have a good idea of what's going on uh, with the unit this time. So we may not be triggering correctly on channel two or with the sample rate. Uh, it may also be something else that's causing that. Okay, so now we are set up to look at some SPI communication here. Uh, I have it set up on all of the SPI chips of this GPIO expander. And then there's a little Arduino that's talking to it. Uh, I've already programmed this, so uh, I know what to expect for the messages. Uh, you can actually see them right there, but we'll uh, take another sample here in just a moment. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, because I'm noticing it just now, uh, occasionally on the screen, this, this looks blurry. That's just because of the refresh rate of the camera and the angle that it's looking at it. Uh, the screen is not blurry. It's actually uh, very crisp and uh, easy to read. So hey, let's uh, take a look at taking a sample here. So for taking a sample, you hit the sample button, which gets it ready to trigger. And then uh, you just have to send it some messages. Okay, so now we have our capture here. And uh, our first bit is a 40. The first nibble uh, really is kind of the addressing. And then the second nibble is telling it if you're writing or reading to it. Um, so then this next one is the register that we're talking to, which we're gonna be talking to register 13. Uh, and then let's come over here to measure and scroll. Okay. And then after register 13, we wrote a zero zero, which was basically telling all the GPIO pins in that bank because register 13 is one bank and register 12 is the other bank on here. So register 13, we turned off all um, the uh, output. As you can see, this scroll knob is a little bit obnoxious here, and you don't always get perfect decoding, but it is pretty good. Okay. Actually, kind of a brief overview of how the sampling works on here. Let's uh, go back to the menus here. Go to the menu for SPI, and then you go to the submenu there, and that is where you can actually change um, what the decoding format is. So. Uh, you can also change what your word size is, your bit order, uh, and all of that. So we know that it's least significant bit first and that our data format is in hex is how I want it decoded because I know what these messages are in hex. I don't know what they are in ASCII. That's kind of your overview of how to use the SPI, which is what I tend to use the most in uh, my projects is SPI over I squared C. So that kind of gives you the overview of how to use this thing to do a logic analyzing, um, which is what this is. It's a logic analyzer, but guess what else? They actually made this thing have its own operating system on here and you can write all sorts of applications to do pretty much anything you want with this thing. Um, it's super useful and uh, pretty like hackable would be the term where you can write your own interface for it of what it's doing and do pretty much anything you want. And you get four channels you can sample from and four channels you can write out in the, in that you should definitely check out some other videos on YouTube on this miniware LA 104 to see how to do that applications. Uh, I just don't really have the time to write an application for it and show how it works. Uh, but there are other videos out there that show how to use it, show how to write a, uh, application for it. Uh, one of the other things that I've noticed out there is there's a lot of really bad videos on this thing too. Like one of them even called this a digital storage 
um, oscilloscope, which I mean, I guess, yeah, kind of it is sort of an oscilloscope, but this company actually makes an oscilloscope too that's in about the same form factor. So definitely uh, if the logic analyzer part doesn't seem too useful for you, you may want to look at the oscilloscope they sell instead. Uh, I have enough oscilloscopes that I didn't want a pocket oscilloscope, um, but this, this does actually seem to be really useful. Uh, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, it the only thing I, uh, my two complaints that I have on it would be, uh, it's, there needs to be kind of an easier way to scroll through the, your message you're trying to decode in a faster way to scroll through it than, uh, than this knob. May, maybe there's something in the settings uh, I'm not noticing uh, that I can adjust that speed there because it, it does seem a little bit small, uh, slow. I guess is what I'm looking for, a little bit slow for uh, scrolling through there. I also don't like that you have to click the sample button uh, beforehand. You should, it it ought to be in a run mode where it's just capturing all the time and then you hit have like a run stop so you can stop it. Uh, it shouldn't just be like a, just capture till you trigger and then stop capturing. Um, I guess it really, it really should be like a setting where you can choose in between one. This is kind of like a, a you only get a single capture mode on there. I'm sure you could write a custom script that does it. There may already be one out there. I have not looked into all of the scripts that are out there already for this thing. Uh, you'll probably see it on the channel again in the future when I do finally check that stuff out. Um, but yeah, definitely a really useful piece of kit, especially if you just need something small that doesn't take up too much space that you don't absolutely have to have plugged into the computer. So yes, I give it the thumbs up. I think it's useful. I think it's good. Uh, I think that it is worth the price. I mean, yes, I'll be honest, I didn't pay for it, but I, if uh, I bought it, I would have been happy with what I paid uh, price-wise. It's definitely not absolutely perfect, but I think this is as close to meeting the requirements as I would have ever got for what I wanted out of a logic analyzer. I wanted small, portable, and with its own screen, I didn't want to have to be dedicated to a computer. So I'm happy with it. I think anybody that had similar requirements to me would be happy with it. I mean, if you want absolutely perfect decoding all the time, you're gonna have to pay the money for a more expensive tool. But for hobby work, this thing is absolutely all you need. So I know I didn't cover every single feature this thing has, uh, but, I mean, we'd be here all day looking at it if we did that. It really does have a lot of features. Um, I'm not going to do a teardown. There's plenty of other videos out there uh, on the internet of this thing torn down. So no need to tear it down here. And uh, yeah, I I'm happy with it. So I hope you guys liked the video and uh, definitely check down in the description for a link if you want to purchase one of these and I will see you guys in the next one.